welcome back to Holistic Developer Channel. Hopefully you're doing great. Um, it's been um, a minute since I posted and talked about something that uh, I felt passionate about um, and I wanted to, to do that in this video. So without getting into a lot of weird introductions, the topic today that I want to talk about is, are the mistakes that I made as a software engineer. So my top mistakes that I did as a software engineer. So some of these mistakes will be from early on in my career when I was just starting and some are like even recent ones. And when I was like thinking about this topic, it was like yesterday, I believe I was sitting in my couch and was like, hey, I think this will be something that is useful to talk about. But at the same time, I was like, I feel embarrassed to share my mistakes, but I think it will be really useful to share them and reflect not, I'm already reflecting on them, but it will be good to share them for other people to know and try to avoid them. So at least other people will be learning from my mistakes and um, I, at least we can laugh at some of my mistakes. But one mistake that I'll, one mistake that I'll start about that is embarrassing, but it was even before I got my engineering degree or even knew that I'll be an engineer, um, but it's related to computers. Uh, it was early on, I, I didn't have a computer. Uh, I think I was a teenager, probably 16 years old or something like that. And around that time, uh, in where I grew up in Europe, there were internet clubs <laughs> that um, had internet. So I went to the internet club, wanted to, to do something, Google something or whatever it was. I paid for an hour for the internet. I sit down at the computer. Um, I remember typing something in the URL and waiting for things to happen and nothing happened. And I was so embarrassed to ask for help. So I was sitting there for an hour waiting for things to happen and nothing was happening. So it's embarrassing, but long story short, it was, um, please don't do that. <laughs> Please, when you don't know something, it's normal to ask for help. Don't waste your time. Uh, don't waste your money or energy or stuff like that. So what was the problem? It was I typed the URL, but I didn't hit enter. So it's important to hit enter for things to work in this particular case. So um, that's my embarrassing story. So uh, share with me your embarrassing story, like a oh, mistake you've done. Um, it's obviously not that big of a mistake, but stuff. So going back to the topic. So as I was sitting in the couch the other day thinking like, what mistakes did I do? Um, and I was like, okay, I will look at the top three mistakes that I've done. And I was started to write them down. And as I was thinking and thinking like, my list kept growing and growing and growing. It's like, oh my God, all of this time I thought that I had like just a few mistakes, but in reality, I had a lot of them, but some of them I, I want and I, do actually think about them not necessarily as mistakes, but opportunities from which I learned. So the very first one is that I see not only my mistake, but the mistake that many software engineers do with junior engineers is that as soon as you get an error, um, you freak out and you don't know what to do. And if you are just a little bit like me, you might be doing the same mistake is that you get the error and you don't know what's wrong, but you don't read the message, the error message. That's, I'm, uh, I am guilty of this over and over and over again. I remember how many times I was just getting an error and didn't know what to do and I was just stuck. So the things that is wrong about that, first thing that was wrong is that I didn't read the error. Uh, message to understand what might, might be wrong and trying to get what is the error. Second error in that case, it was I needed to to Google it. Like if I would have learned, uh, read it, had no idea what it is, Google it, and then <laughs> there are many things that um, provide an answer like Stack Overflow. And there are many, many different uh, forums and blogs and articles that might provide an answer through that. And the third one, kind of third mistake that it's all encompassed in one, to ask for help when something is not working and not waste time uh, when time can be saved. Another um, mistake, my biggest mistake that I was doing over and over again is that, let's say when I was researching something or learning something or 
trying to fix and find uh, the root cause of a problem, I will debug stuff. And as soon as I get something that is not according to what is needed, I will say, hey, I found a problem and really quickly run to my boss or my team lead or something like that and say, hey, I found the problem. Here it is. Um, to find out that in reality, that was not the problem. Uh, it was where uh, it was at the beginning of the stack <laughs> um, where things might be wrong, but the root cause was deep in, in the stack. So I needed to step in into the function and continue researching to figure out what it is. And in that particular case, it was a huge uh, recursion engine with a lot of recursions. So like, and even if I found at the beginning something that is wrong, <sighs> guess what? Uh, I had to go through like 15 more different iteration in that recursion to get to the source. So that is one of the problems that I, I got better at, but till this day, a lot of times I'm jumping to the conclusion way too soon. So I'm trying to get better at not jumping to the conclusion soon. So hopefully you can learn something from that. Uh, oh my God. And this one, I think I can get crowned from it. I will be the queen, uh, queen of typos. I cannot tell you how many times I made so many mistakes and so much frustration and time wasted um, just because I didn't type something correctly. And maybe for you, it's easy if your English is your first language, but for me, English is not my first language and it's not the second and not the third. But the thing is that in the previous code base that I was working, we had data models that were called GRP and GR, uh, GRD, right? And there's so many times when I needed to get something, hey, like get this property from GRP. And I, by mistake, muscle memory, I did GRD because the day before I worked with the GRD model and then try to figure out why it's not working, why it's not compiling, what's going on. Uh, to realize that I misspelled that thing. Um, that's one occurrence. Uh, the other <laughs> time when this happened, it was uh, during CSS, um, when I was doing some, uh, I was doing an assessment at my coding bootcamp, uh, like why the code is not passing. I see that it's everything good. Like the screen is compiling and it shows the components, shows really good but my unit tests are not passing, like what's going on? So I wasted a lot of time until I realized that I misspelled a word. I don't remember what it was, but it was like a subtle uh, typo. I was like, oh, so I am the queen of misspelling things. So uh, that's something that I try to, when something is not working these days, I was like, okay, let me check if I spelled stuff correctly. Um, the next big, big mistake that I, I done from early on, since I was learning to code, it was that I was not experimenting. I will get an assignment. I need to get the assignment, get it working. And that is, that was the target or the scope that I had. And it would have been so much better. I would have become so much more experienced and faster and better at engineering if I allowed myself to wonder like, hey, what if I do this? What if I do it this way? What if I try to do it the other way, right? And so I didn't do that when I was in college. I didn't do that at work early on. And I think I wasted a lot of opportunities, a lot of learning opportunities that hopefully you don't do the same mistake as I, I do, please experiment. So next mistake that I did early on a lot. It was something that led me to my imposter syndrome and actually made it more acute than it should have been. I was comparing myself with other people. And just to give you a little bit of context, I was a person who maybe had just recently joined the company and I would get a, an assignment that I need to do. I'm like six months into the job, needed to do something. And it takes me, let's say three days to do something. And then I turn around and look at somebody else, similar assignment, they get it in one day. And like, I was like, why? Like, I'm not as good, I'm not as fast, I'm not as creative and stuff like that. And what in reality was happening is like, I was comparing myself as a person who had experience, like six months of experience with a person who had experienced 17 years. 
Um, and obviously, those are not comparison of apples to apples. What I needed to do it was to compare myself, like me in six months of experience with me at experience of three months. Like, did I get faster? Did I get better? Did I learn something? Am I moving in the right direction? Moving on to the next thing in my list of errors. Um, <laughs> what I wrote here is like being afraid of deleting code and starting over. So a lot of times uh, I will start something and I think that's the right thing and I try to do it. Uh, I go along and try to solve the problem uh, to get to the point that I see that is, I cannot solve it. I tried one approach, I tried another approach and it's not working. Um, and just getting stuck to the portion where I got. And if I would have just deleted the code tried a different approach. This kind of goes to experimenting, but maybe not exactly. I'll try to, to write it again. And at that time, maybe have fresher ideas, uh, knowing what are the roadblocks down the road and trying to, to make it better. Because the idea is that you write something, make it work, and then you refactor it, right? And in this case, I was trying to make something work and I was stubborn to make that particular part, that code written correctly from scratch. Um, and if I would have just deleted, try something, doesn't work, delete it, try something else and not try to make the code beautiful immediately. Um, the next thing is that not looking back at the past code that I wrote and trying to look at um, improvements. So, <laughs> If you're not doing this, but like looking back at the code I wrote six months ago, I'm sure I'll cringe at the things that I've done just because that was me six months ago to the knowledge I knew six months ago. And that was the best version of me six months ago. And today I'm not the best version. Like I'm not the genius or the knowledge that I'll have in the future. Not, I don't think I will ever be a genius. Um, that is not in my genetics, but I will know the, what I will know in the future. But what I know today is definitely something more than yesterday. So just looking at, Hey, here's something that I can do better. A, Hey, looks like this is actually something that I need to pay attention and try to do even better in this case. Um, so just trying to find places for improvements. Uh, the next mistake that uh, I've done is not paying enough attention to requirements. A lot of times I will get a, a ticket or a bug or a feature request or something like that and look at what is written in that description and start coding to get to a point where that is delivered and the customer saying, hey, that's not what I wanted or what is needed. And it was that I didn't pay enough attention to requirements or I didn't reach out to clarifications. So like, what's the point of developing something uh, when at the end of the day is not what is needed. So definitely something that I am much better at these days. Um, the other thing is that not asking questions when I'm confused, just making kind of, yeah, yeah, like I'll figure it out. I'll Google it or something like that. And there's like, you ha it, there is a balance. Like when, yes, don't expect to know everything immediately, especially if the topic is new. But also if that person is the expert or that person knows the context, ask the question if that doesn't make sense. Don't waste the time. Um, and at the same time, it's okay to say, hey, I don't know. When something is being asked of you, it's like, I don't know, but I'll learn it out. So that is something that is still to this day, it's kind of hard for me to say, I don't know, but I'm doing much better on that one. Um, the next one is a good one. Uh, writing complex code. I don't know how many times I will tell you that I, I, I had the impression for the longest time that uh, code needs to be sexy, it needs to be clean, elegant, and look good. It's true, but the code has to be functional. It has to be easy to read, easy to understand, and to be understood, it has to pass the, the test of waking up at the middle of the night, turn on your computer and look at the code and tell me what it does without waking up. Uh, I mean, completely fully waking up. So the, it should be this simple. It should be super simple to be able to read it and understand it. So. No need to be clever in the code. Simplicity is key. The next error is that not documenting enough. Um, 
The next error is that not knowing enough about the business. It's, it's like, it's really hard to program and do a, a really good, amazing solution for the ultimate user. If you don't know the business and you don't know their expectations, how that will be used. It's kind of trying to guess something or trying to drive somewhere with blindfolded eyes. You know how to drive, but you don't see in which direction you're going. So, um, Another thing that this is an error that is recent. I, I recently had this and it was pretty, um, pretty, I don't know. I don't know what word I want to use in this case, but um, maybe upsetting is a good word to use in this case because I kind of fell into this mistake over and over again and recently fell in it again. Is not an ability to speak user's language or making sure that you speak the same language. So really quickly, the same scenario, we were talking about uh, something that needs to be implemented, uh, going through the requirements, here's what we'll do, here's what we'll implement. Um, this functionality will work for this role, um, uh, yada, yada, yada. And the, the stakeholder says, yes, that works, that is exactly what is needed. Uh, we spend weeks in developing the, the necessary code solution or the application solution um, to immediately uh, get people a lot of emails with like with like warning sign or exclamation sign people cannot do x y and z and in reality it gets to the point that we talked we use the same terminology but that terminology for me as an engineer meant x and f the same exact words for the uh, user meant why and we use the same words but we meant different things so that's something that is definitely a mistake that happens uh, a lot and I'm trying to to do better at that so communication is important in this case um, so getting down to the last couple of errors is that um, a lot of times if you something doesn't work obviously you google and uh, find solution and just copying pasting that solution without understanding the code I cannot tell you how many times I've, I've been um, guilty of this early on. So now I'm doing much better in this case, but uh, it also depends on the time of the day, year, or whatever it is, like depending on the scenario I'm in. Um, sometimes I'm just like, okay, I understand this and that and that. But sometimes it's okay to be a black box, not necessarily to know every single detail, but you have to have a general understanding. Um, and the next thing is that creating error logs. It's important, like it's important to have code that will communicate to you um, when something is not going right. Right? Uh, you need to know, kind of, to have logs, errors, and traces to be able to diagnose if something's not working right. Um, the next error, I think a lot of people know this, is deploying on Friday. So don't deploy on Friday <laughs> because you know, I, I won't get into that. And, um, and yeah, those are the errors. So as I said, originally, I was thinking that I'll have like two errors that I can talk about three maximum. And as, as I was going, the list of errors was growing and growing and growing. It's like, okay, oh my God, like how many errors I'm doing? Some of them I'm doing better. Some of them is a work in progress, but I hope, um, why I share this with you is that, that you can Add some of them you can laugh, some of them you actually can learn from my mistake and not do the same mistakes over and over, just learn from them and um, make sure that you apply into practice the best practices, avoiding these mistakes and um, becoming and growing faster and uh, easier in your tech career, ad advancing your career by avoiding these mistakes. So um, please share with people who definitely will find this information useful. Um, it will help them grow. It will be informative. Or if they want to laugh at my mistakes, that's fine. I'm okay with that. So feel free to share it. Thank you for watching this until the end. Make sure to like, subscribe, and make sure that your notification bell is turned on so you don't get the notification missing for the next videos that I'm, I'm going to upload. Bye-bye.